You may be thinking that it's because we're eating more, right? Well, remember that cycle of motilin resistance? Motilin resistance causes overeating and therefore more fat, not the other way around. So if my overeating was simply a symptom of motilin resistance, what was the cause, I asked? How do I get rid of this modal resistance, I asked. And at that exact moment, Brian's phone began to ring, and as soon as he looked down and saw who it was, he told me he had to go, and he frantically began to throw all of his clippings and graphs into his bag and headed for the door. But, but, but wait, I still have so much to ask. This is going to change everything, I yelled. I need to know more. How do I contact you? I'll be in touch, he said, and he handed me a prepaid phone and he walked out of the door just like that. I was frustrated and confused because I still had so much more that I wanted to know, but at the same time, I felt this new wave of excitement and energy I hadn't felt since I was a little child. I walked out of that coffee shop with my newfound information, determined to find the answers. For weeks, I devoured everything the library had to offer. I read through hundreds of dusty old medical journals. I visited universities, spoke to doctors, endocrinologists, alternative therapists, and even Chinese herb doctors for help. But I found nothing new. Just the same old tired advice of eat less, exercise more, and count calories. Advice that you or any other person struggling with weight loss listening to my story today has heard a million times before. I felt like I'd hit a brick wall. And after weeks of research, I was nowhere. But then something amazing happened. Call it what you want, but I call it an answered prayer from God. As I mentioned before, I am a special education teacher for Clark County Schools here in Nevada. And every year, all the special ed teachers in our state are given the chance to volunteer on a trip to somewhere in the world, lesser developed, to sponsor a school and teach for the summer. And this year, the school board had us going to Indonesia. I had never really took the trip in the past when my ex-husband and I were together and when my boys were little, but this year I thought, what the heck, I'll go and enjoy myself. I had no idea at the time that this would be the place where my entire life and health would be changed forever. This place, this little tiny island village in Indonesia with a population of fewer than 10,000 people is where I learned the ancient 30-second morning ritual. So after a total of two layers and 33 hours of traveling, we finally landed in this tiny Indonesian airport. We were greeted by a group of Indonesian teachers, 23 in total. The leader of them was Surya Halim, and among her were other women from a tiny remote village called Badui. As the weeks went on, I began to pick up on something quite unusual. These seven women, who were all in their mid-fifties, didn't have a single ounce of fat on them. They were slim and fit-looking, healthy and full of energy. I mean, they would go all day non-stop type energy. Every day we were together, I would notice they would eat their plate of food, but then never eat again for the rest of the day and not even be tempted. No second portions, no desserts, no snacks, even with the delicious plates of cakes, fried food, and candy bars they had prepared and available for us. Back home, this would have been the total opposite. We love our food and we keep eating and eating even after dinner. Being the curious one that I am, one night I politely pulled Surya to the side and asked her, how do you guys have the willpower to not eat all this delicious food and for that matter, not even be remotely tempted by it? I told her all about my health condition, my husband leaving me, and that I had tried everything to lose weight and had nowhere else to turn. If you know anything that can help me, please tell me I pleaded. I've been through so much, please. Surya just smiled, gave me a big hug, and told me she would be right back and to wait here. A couple of minutes had passed, and she returned with what looked like a very old, crumpled up piece of paper. On it was what looked to me like a recipe, complete with a list of exotic plants and herbs, most of which I had no clue how to even pronounce or even heard of. If you don't mind me asking, what is this? I asked her, looking down the list. Exactly what you've been looking for, she said with a sparkle in her eye, 
and a childlike grin on her face. It's in these ingredients, our figure, our energy, all of our health is because of this. She pointed to the list and continued, obesity simply doesn't exist on our island. This recipe, which has been handed down in our village from generation to generation, is the secret, she said. Eat these ingredients and you will be made new. And with that, Sturia stood up, gave me a big smile and a hug, and got back to work. Only then did it even occur to me that Surya and her teachers had this small leather water pouch containing some kind of liquid mix of plants and herbs that they would take a couple of drops of every morning. I had asked to try it thinking it might have been water or something, but they said it was much more valuable than gold and politely refused. The minute I returned home to the U.S., I began researching the ingredients in Surya's list. The first one was something called Malabar tamarind. What the heck was that, I wondered? Well, we actually know it as the exotic fruit Garcinia here in the United States. According to research, Garcinia is the only known supplement to naturally suppress appetite, and it also supports healthy cholesterol levels and blood sugar levels. But more importantly, it inhibits the effects of an enzyme known as citrate lyase. This enzyme plays a key role in fat production. When citrate lyase is blocked, fat production also gets slowed down or blocked altogether. Now, it's important you follow what I'm saying here because this is where it gets very interesting. Citrate lyase is found all over the place in almost every single consumer item we buy. Scientists have only just begun to understand how the enzyme became so prominent in our bodies. But get this, it's only within the last 50 years that this particular enzyme came into the picture. And as it entered our bloodstream, it started to disrupt our delicate body functions. And I wasn't sure what that had to do with belly fat until I began to search deeper and struck gold. A groundbreaking new study done in 2018 by a team of doctors and scientists at the Center for Diet and Weight Loss in Tel Aviv, Israel, found that people with higher concentration of the enzyme citrate lyase were more than nine times more likely to become resistant to modalin as their food intake was never suppressed and they quickly put on weight. Simply incredible. But citrate lyase is only one of many foreign compounds disrupting chemicals in our environment. TBT is another and it is found in paint pesticides, and vinyl products. In a new March 2019 study published in Frontiers in Endocrinology has directly linked it to modalin resistance too. And what about PFOA, an endocrine disruptor found in Teflon cookware that soaks into your food as you cook? Well, a study published in Molecular and Cellular Endocrinology linked PFOA to modalin resistance as well. In fact, recently, the American Medical Association the National Institutes of Health and White House Task Force on Childhood Obesity declared endocrine disrupting chemicals an immediate danger to America's waistlines. Since then, study after study, like those published in the International Journal of Environmental Research and Public Health, Toxological Sciences, even Dr. Oz, have linked, without a doubt, endocrine disrupting chemicals to modalin resistance. So, Click on the order button below and I'll see you on the other side.